Brethren, praise God. We thank him for the Easter season, which we are just going through. And we hope that Easter story brought you the good news that it is supposed to bring, because Easter story is good news story. Easter story is triumphant story. Easter story is victory story. And so we thank the Almighty God who is our Father, and that God will continue speaking to us during this season as we continue celebrating Jesus' resurrection in the name of the same, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Now friends, Jesus rose from the dead. We've been celebrating his, uh, his death. We celebrated uh, the time that he was arrested, he was crucified, and he was buried. But the real celebration came on Sunday morning when Jesus Christ rose from the dead meaning that actually he defeated the powers of death. Now, this season that uh, we are in is a period of resurrection, is a period of Easter, and I want to bring to your attention that after Jesus rose from the dead, he spent another 40 solid days on earth, and it is this time around that I desire to share with you uh, the appearances. Why did Jesus spend those 40 days, what was he doing? What Jesus was doing was giving valid proofs that he had risen from the dead. And I just want to take a few moments highlighting who are the testimonies, who are the people that Jesus uh, appeared to, so that actually we really have the strong belief that actually the Lord Jesus Christ resurrected. And what we are sharing is scriptural because we read it as the word of God and it speaks to our hearts. And Jesus, after his resurrection, he made several appearances, proving himself alive because he walked, he walked around, he talked to people, and he went about doing lots of things like we shall, we are going to highlight a, a, a few moments to come. Jesus showed himself alive. The one that once died, the one that was once buried, he stayed in the tomb three days, as the Bible says, and he rose on the Sunday morning. And so he walked around alive after he was dead. Jesus presented himself talking to the people that had doubted, the people that had denied, people that had actually ran away, literally because uh, of fear because of anxiety and that was it and so we begin with the first verse that Jesus himself mentions in Revelation chapter 1 verse 18 and the Bible mentions something that uh, he himself the Lord says and he says that actually I am he who lives and was dead and behold I am alive forever amen he says so, and I have the keys of Hades and of death. Remember, the Jesus that actually we are celebrating is the Amen. He is the one with the key. Remember, he's the one that, that died. He's the one that rose from the dead. And so he says it himself. He proves it to himself. He says it himself that he's alive, that once dead, but alive. Remember, he had resurrected Lazarus in John chapter 11. And he says, I am the resurrection and the life. And so, friends, we believe in the Lord Jesus Christ who is alive because he says it himself in this Revelation book, chapter 1, verse 18. He says, I'm alive and I have the keys of Hades and death. The reason why the stone at the entrance of the tomb could not hold him. The reason why the guards at the entrance at the tomb could not hold him. Angel came from heaven and opened the door and removed the stone. Jesus rose because he had the key. And so what we believe, what we hope from this is he holds the key, and therefore since he holds the key, you and I who believe in the Lord Jesus Christ who is alive, we also believe that actually he will open ours. And so these proofs that he gives, they are for you and me, that actually when we die, it's not the end. When we collapse and die and are buried, that's not the end because Jesus holds the key. And now there are several other people that Jesus tells proves to, to them that he was alive. When we look, when we read Luke chapter 24, verse 39, Jesus mentions to the friends, he finds them in a closed door, and he says, look at my hands 
and my feet. It is I myself. And Jesus ate with them. They got excited. Joy. They mothered. Now, why? Because they had lost hope that Jesus was gone, buried. And now he rises and he shows them, see me, I am the one. And so excited, they looked at him with joy. And so friends, our times can also mean to be so hard, can mean to, to be so hopeless. But these people in Luke chapter 24, verse 39, he says, look at me, look at my hands. And so we also raise our, our eyes up, our eyes in faith, and know that the Lord Jesus Christ lives. Jesus also does make appearances to the women. And the first woman to see the Lord Jesus Christ was Mary Magdalene in John chapter 20, verse 14 to 16. We read the Bible and does mention that actually Mary went about weeping at the tomb. And the Bible says she was there and Jesus appeared. She saw Jesus, but she could not recognize him until she thought that actually this was a gardener or something like that. And until Jesus mentions her name and Mary shouts Rabon and he mentions it because she was weeping. Rabon means teacher. And so an expected appearance of the Lord Jesus Christ to Mary Magdalene indicates that actually Jesus is alive and he appears to console, to, he appears to, 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 to encourage, he appears to energize, he appears. And indeed, actually, Mary rejoices thereafter. And so, friends, these appearances first to Mary, the woman that we are talking about here, was totally unexpected. And so I pray for you that the Lord Jesus Christ does his unexpected appearance. He comes to speak to you. He comes to encourage you because actually our times can mean to be times of weeping, times of crying. And now here Mary was at the tomb crying. There are people that have taken time, they've lost their dear ones, they spent time in the graveyards, they spent time in agony, they spent time agonizing and weeping and stressing and anxious and worried. Now the Lord Jesus Christ appears to Mary here. And so it is a message for us in this generation. In the 40 days, Jesus was doing this and he appeared to this Mary Magdalena and meaning that for the women were very, very, very tremendous, very, very women were very, very key in the resurrection story. And so we appeal to ourselves, to our hearts, that the Lord Jesus Christ, we may be weeping, we may be agonizing, but the Lord Jesus Christ appears and he knows us by name because he mentions Mary and Mary looks around and says, oh, so it's the Lord Jesus Christ. So the Lord the Lord God knows you by name. And so we believe that actually even during our times, this happens. Now the next person that Jesus appears to is Mary, the mother of James, and the, uh, Mary, I mean Salome, and the, the women, Joanna. These are women. And these are three at this time. And in Matthew chapter 29, 28, verse 9, they, um, they looked at him, they beheld him. The Bible says that actually they, they took hold of his feet and they worshiped him. And he told them something that I want to tell you. He told them, rejoice. And this is in Matthew 28, 29, 28, 9. Rejoice. And so what do you need as a Christian? What you need is to remember that the Lord Jesus Christ rose and he desires joy. He asked us, rejoice. And he told them, rejoice because he was no longer dead, but he was alive. And another person that the Lord Jesus Christ appears to prove to us that he's alive is Peter. Remember Peter, the man that followed along, you know, but I mean, you know, denied him three times. The man went into crying, weeping and things like that. In Luke chapter 24, verse 34, the Bible says, people gave testimony after the Emmaus journey and they told their friends that actually have met the Lord. You remember the Lord walked along with them and that Emmaus story is clear in Luke chapter 24. And so they said he, he is risen, he is risen indeed and he has appeared to Simon. They refer to him by his first name. And so details are not disclosed here, but there is a way that the Lord appears to his people and he does it privately. And so I pray for you that the Lord Jesus Christ appears to you privately like he did to these people to rejuvenate them. Private interaction with the Lord. And the Bible encourages us to have private interaction. You as a person, these people are testifying that he has appeared. Meaning 
the Raka when the Lord appears to another person, it becomes your testimony as well. Because look at the people get transformed, people get, get changed. Peter, the denier, remember, now had been transformed. And then the people are saying, listen, he has appeared to Simon Peter. He has appeared to him. And because of they have seen, seen Peter do extraordinary things, I mean, the, the, the what upon a time denier is now someone who actually who speaking boldly. And so this man at the Emma's story that I want to continue on in chapter 24, they were leaving Jerusalem and going to Emma's hopeless people. Because actually they, they do mention by themselves that actually we had hoped that this man, Jesus Christ, would be the one to save our nation. They had lost hope. They had become hopeless indeed. But Jesus encourages them, speaks to them. He appears to them there. And therefore, friends, there are circumstances that can be. He might have, have hoped for something. And at the moment, it's not there. But now the Lord Jesus Christ is meeting the people on the road to Emmaus. And therefore, I ask you not to lose hope because the Lord Jesus Christ draws closer. And the Bible says that he walks along with them. And my desire and my prayer for you is that the Lord walks along with you in your life journey, in your marriage journey, in your work journey, in your academic journey, whatever journey that it is that the Lord walks along with you. Because we walked along with these people on the way to a mouse. And so friends, one other thing that actually I wanted to point out because okay, this approves for us so that we can gain energy, strength to continue loving and serving the Lord and serving him during our lifetime and as he walks along with us. And here comes the doubter, Thomas, and um, he was absent in John chapter 20, verse 19, 20, 24. He was not there and Jesus appears to the disciples. Now, he comes, stands in between them, in, in between them and pronounces peace to them. This time, Peter, Thomas was not there. Doubter, 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 Thomas. Now, in the next, after eight days, in chapter 20, verse 26, he appeared to them again. And the Bible says, this time Thomas was with them. Now, Thomas says, unless I see. Thomas says, unless I touch, I will not believe. Now, Jesus appears in verse 29, he looks at them and tells Thomas to stretch his finger and touch the marks where they had hammered the nails and feel where they had pierced. And now Thomas said, I believe. Now Jesus makes a statement that is for you and me. The statement in verse 29 is this, blessed are those who believe without seeing. Now that statement was meant for you and me, because we were not there. None of us was there. Thomas made a remarkable step for us. Because actually, Jesus, maybe Jesus wouldn't have mentioned this statement if Thomas had not doubted. But now this statement is for you and me, because actually Jesus said, blessed are those who believe without seeing. We have not seen our Lord Jesus Christ physically. We feel him, we touch him, we look at him, we believe him by faith, and because he walked around, and these are the proofs that show that Jesus was alive. And so Jesus makes this statement, blessed are those who believe without seeing. I thank the Lord that even when I was not there on the resurrection day, Jesus makes a statement for me, blessed are those. So blessed am I, blessed are you who believe without seeing, not even touching the Lord Jesus Christ by physically, but you touch him by spirit. And so we thank the Lord that these appearances were there and Jesus is still walking along with us. Jesus is still making the same plea that he made, the one he made for Thomas, he still makes it for you and for me. Now, at one moment, another time that Jesus appears is in John chapter 21, that this, there were 70 disciples gathered at the beach. Remember, they had lost hope. And Peter tells them, I'm going fishing and all joining. And they went. But the Bible says actually, for the whole night in chapter 21, they fished nothing. They had lost hope and they fished nothing the entire night. And so when Jesus appears by the shores, he calls them children and instructs them to throw the net on the right side of the boat. And here the Bible says that they caught such an enormous number of fish that they could not even you know, manage to drag into the boat. And so friends, we may give a trial by ourselves. We may try day and night by ourselves 
until the Lord Jesus Christ comes into your life. Until the Lord Jesus Christ comes out to the scene that success may dawn. So I appeal to us, I appeal to myself in me here and say, Lord Jesus Christ, come in and may this happen that happened with the disciples at the seashore. Until he instructs, until he says it, until he permits it, success will come, victory will come, triumph will come, and prosperous prosperity that you desire will come and only when the Lord Jesus Christ is within there. Now this man had tried all night long, no fish to catch, and now this time he comes and tells them, throw on the right side of the boat. And the same story is told by other gospel writers and they caught fish. And so I pray for you that the Lord will walk along with you, that the Lord will find you in your dilemma. These people had been in the dilemma, that the Lord will find you in the dilemma, in that dilemma, and that actually he will lift you up and there will be joy for you and that the Lord Jesus Christ will be reigning in your life. And now as I turn towards the finish, in Matthew chapter 28, verse 16, 17, now 11 were there. They proceeded to the mountain he had designated. He had told them, I will meet you there. They, when they saw him, they worshipped him there. Now I want to ask you, move on. At the instruction of the Lord, worship him. Because these people worshipped the Lord. I am called upon to worship the Lord. You are called upon to worship the Lord. You know, he deals with our dilemmas. He deals with our inconveniences. Sleepless nights. He deals with them. So worship the Lord. And at one time, the Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 6, Paul does mention that he appeared to 500 multitudes at one go. So Jesus is alive. Jesus walks along with us. And Jesus needs you. He needs you. He needs you to be a person that he has called you to be. I and you. We need to believe that it does. And he appeared to James, so Paul says in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, appeared to James and then all the apostles at one go. Now finally, he appeared to Paul. No, not yet Paul. He appeared to Saul. And he says, I am Jesus. In Acts chapter 9, chapter 9, verses 3 to 5, I am Jesus whom you are persecuting. Jesus was up in heaven because I ascended already. And he does the same watching us every step that you take every journey that you move jesus watches you now jesus declares i am he i am jesus whom you persecute now friends these appearances are proof to us and they are called infallible proofs that the lord jesus christ is alive now you may be in a certain dilemma like the men at the, at the shores you have tried your best but nothing is coming forth the lord jesus christ is alive. The one that appeared to Mary Magdalene, the one that appeared to the three women, the one that appeared to, the, to Peter, to Thomas, the doubter, and he mentions, blessed are those who believe without seeing. Now continue believing the Lord, and he will lift you up. And so I pray for you that the Lord, Jesus Christ, who is alive, brings life into your life. That the Lord Jesus Christ, who is who proclaims peace, brings peace to your life. And may God continue being with us today. May he continue being with you. And may continue, continue, continue speaking to you. And I pray that the Lord who is alive gives life to this life that is speaking now. That the Lord who is alive gives life to you who is watching and listening. And that God breathes peace into our lives in the name of the same. Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. <music>